Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it again, bringing you a brand new traveling and trading vlog here in Lima, Peru. Absolutely beautiful place. I want to share with you guys a couple trade reviews, kind of a, a day in the life, what I've been up to for the last six weeks. Give you guys a couple of room tours and also one of the best experiences here going sandboarding in the desert here in Peru, a little city called Hakachino. So let's get into the trade reviews, talk about some trading, and then let's get back to the rest of the travels. What I've been up to for the last six weeks. Let's go. Two trade reviews we are going to look at. One winner, one loser, both with the exact same top-down analysis. One sell signal, one buy signal. And hopefully you guys can pick up what I'm trying to lay down here in these videos. So this was Euro-Canadian, 500 bucks. Let's break this down. And then we will look at the stock market. So... On this one, making sure I don't get myself in the way with me being in the bottom right-hand corner, we always start with our higher time frame. Trading supply and demand, we always want to be aware of where the big money is coming into the markets. So we started here on our weekly time frame. This could be any different time frame sequence. The secondary setup we're going to look at was actually on the one minute. Okay, so different time frame sequence setups for different types of traders, whether you are swing trading, long-term position trading, day trading, or scalping. So this one was Europe Canadian weekly time frame, starting on the weekly time frame. Drawing out our weekly supply and demand zones, we want to be aware of where the big money is coming into the markets. So when I draw out my supply and demand zones here on the weekly time frame, clearly when prices dropped from up in here, we had a very big move down to the downside. So that was indicating to me that a lot of sellers stepped into the market during that time. Same thing down in here. I was looking for selling opportunities in here when prices pulled back up into that area over here to the right. Sure, I was looking for selling opportunities. I probably got into a trade and it probably ended up being a loser. But hey, that's okay. You're going to win some and lose some. So here on this one, we had price coming back up into weekly supply over here. That tells me now that I'm inside a higher time frame area of weekly supply of where previous a lot of sellers have came into the market, I want to go down to my lower time frame, my entry time frame, and try to figure out a nice sell setup, a confirmation entry, waiting for evidence of sellers to come in. Uh, by the way, this would also be a, a supply zone that I would also look for selling opportunities if price came in. All right, so we're, we're doing lots of learning here in this video. If prices came back up there, I would for sure look for selling opportunities. So quick recap, we have the trend equals sideways slash uptrend. I want to be aware of what the trend is. We have price inside weekly rally based drop supply. Price is also reacting off of the 200 moving average. And now we want to go down to our lower time frame and look for confirmation sell setup. So that's kind of my game plan. We go down to our lower time frame. What do I want to see? We are on the four hour time frame now. Let me scroll out so you guys can see a little bit better. We go down to our four hour time frame and we start seeing the higher highs and higher lows. What we want to see is sellers coming into the market by breaking upward trend lines and removing opposing zones. That's going to be an indication to us that sellers are now stopping, are now stepping into the market. And we now want to be looking for the pullback of the supply zone. So that's what we had price doing. We, created, we had price creating higher highs and higher lows. We removed that opposing pivot point demand zone. We broke upward trend line and we have a very nice quality scoring zone it has a very nice strong leg out look at the strength of the sellers coming into the market a lot of sellers came in right there we broke upward trend we removed opposing demand zones uh, look how far price is left it's a fresh zone we're located inside higher time frame supply so we're trying to build a case of why we are looking for sell setup okay now, this one did work out pretty well. What did I say here? Price broke upward momentum. Price removed the posing zone. Price inside higher time frame supply. We have quality rally-based drop supply zone. TP hit at 2 to 1 with small risk. Trade occurred during the ECB rate. So the European Central Bank, the European Central Bank rates at 4 a.m. They came out and that, that's what kind of initiated the trade um, to go in my favor. So that's a really good top-down analysis. Let's go into the stock trade example, and I can break this one down. So this one was 4 hour, 15 minute. Same thing. We start with our higher time frame, okay? This is a really good picture for some reason. Picture skills were on point this day, I must say. 
So this was US 100, the NASDAQ. What do we do? We start with our higher time frame, okay? Four hour time frame, we are drawing out our supply and demand zone. So this is going to be my four hour rally base rally right here. A lot of buyers stepped into the market right here. Look at this move, big move to the upside. Uh, we created new highs in the market. So that was telling me a lot of buyers stepped in and this is where they originated from down in here. So if and when prices come back down into this area of demand, I want to be looking for buying opportunities. Now, what do I say here? I need to have a game plan. Okay, I say trend equals downtrend. That's going to let me know, should I use higher risk? Should I use lower risk? What type of confirmation do I need? What type of trade management do I need to do I need to use? Because I'm probably not going to manage this or trade the same risk when I'm trading counter trend versus trading with the trend. You know what I mean? These are all things to consider. Probably not a smart idea at risking the exact same amount when one trade is a lot lower quality versus the other. You see what I mean? The, tr the thing is, you got to figure out what is a quality trade setup, right? And so that's why I have a lot of these YouTube videos breaking down the whole trading system. I mean, you guys go to my YouTube playlist. I have the full breakdown, breaking down these supply and demand videos, the whole course video on supply and demand part one, part two, part three, and a full hour and a half long video breaking down the whole methodology as well as the free training at moneyballtrading.com. But hey, let's get back into it, into this review. Where are we? Where are we? Let's get back into it. Now, really quickly, if you guys are enjoying this video, I appreciate if you guys do like this video right now, really trying to supply you with a lot of knowledge here. So like I said, price coming back into demand, we wanna look for buying opportunity, price also above the 200 moving average, cool. I now go down into my lower time frame. Now that I know that I am located inside a higher time frame demand zone where previous higher time frame buyers have stepped in, I need to wait for evidence to come into the market. Okay. What was the example I explained in the last one? Higher highs, higher lows, breaking trend lines, right? We need the same thing here, but breaking to the downside. All right. So we have lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. We start removing those areas of supply. Let me scroll in so you guys can see. We start removing those areas of supply, uh, breaking that downward trend line. We have a very big move to the upside right there. That's indicating to me buyers are starting to step into the market. This is how price turns from inside out, right? And then I simply bought the pullback back down there. This ended up being a losing trade, getting wicked out basically by a stop hunt in my opinion. And then prices did continue to go up in this direction. So I was right in the direction, but you know what? Maybe after 20 trades, I can review to see, should I be extending my stop loss to be further? Maybe I should re-enter on positions like this where it stops me out and starts reversing right away. I don't know, but that's why it's important to journal and to review your trades. Now let me show you guys the room tour of where I've been staying at here in Lima, Peru, as well as the awesome sandboarding adventure that I went on. Here we go. So this is the setup. I just trade with one laptop, kind of sit at the desk. I personally don't like working on six different monitors. So we just have a laptop, that's all you really need. And this is the rest of the apartment that I'm staying here in Maria Flores. This place is 700, 680 American a month. It's a really nice apartment that's located in the best part of town, which is Maria Flores. The apartment that I was at in San Miguel was a really nice place. It was like $700 a month, really nice apartment. I really enjoyed it. But then when I told people where I lived, they're like, oh, that's sketchy. Why are you living there? You should be in Maria Flores, which I didn't know about Maria Flores, but that's where all the best activity happens, where like the tourist, right? It's where the best restaurants are, the best bars, the best security, kind of the best apartments. So if you guys ever come here, I would strongly recommend staying in Maria Flores. I'll show you guys that on a map. Uh, but definitely a beautiful place. What I definitely liked the most staying here for the last six weeks in Lima was the beautiful view that they have when you go for a run or you go for a workout outside. A very nice Malacan that you can run across the beach. Uh, lo super long distances. If you're into that, you could run the whole city. And then you can also go back up to the top of the hill and have a really nice workout. So that's what I would do, honestly, almost every day. But there wasn't really too much that I was personally a fan of of the city. So I found myself working out, you know, maybe even twice a day sometimes. I personally wouldn't recommend people staying here in Lima, Peru for more than a couple of days, unless you're like me and you just want to chill out for a month 
and get a lot of work done. So I enjoyed the city, but hey, it's time to move on. Let me show you guys the rest of the tour. That is the kitchen, absolutely beautiful. Got the laundry room in here, which is nice. And then this is, oh, we can show you guys a fridge tour. Everybody loves fridge tours. It's my last day here, so I haven't got anything in here. We got Inca Cola. Maybe we'll do a testing of me trying this out. It's like the Coca-Cola here in Peru. I think it's owned by Coca-Cola. And then hands down when it comes to beer, this is my favorite right here. Pilsen, fantastic beer. I really enjoy it. And that is what the fridge is. I don't think we have anything in the freezer. Everybody loves the freezer and fridge tour. Here's the bathroom, pretty standard. We love it. Here we are, baby, hey. Here's the shower, absolutely amazing. And let's go to the room so you guys can see where we're staying. Very nice apartment, I enjoyed myself here, but definitely let's get into the other travel portion of this video. I appreciate if you guys are enjoying this video too, like it. Let's go sandboarding the most crazy, best adventure that you will go on, definitely here in Peru. Let's go check it out, cheers. We are here in beautiful Hakachina, Peru, four hours south of Lima. Absolutely beautiful. Always wanted to do this and go sandboarding. Amazing experience. That's my friend, Raphael. He took me. This was my first time going down the dunes. Completely bailed, ate it right there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't act like a complete joke. I told this guy I have 12 years of experience. And so I just full send it straight down to the hill. Oh my gosh, so much fun. That's what we are riding in for about two and a half hours. The little dune buggy that we had was two and a half hours going all through the desert, up and down the hills. And we had some Chinese friends with us, my little Chinese girlfriends. Hey, how are you guys doing? <laughs> They're so adorable, aren't they? <laughs> Let's go. Had a great time doing this experience, guys. Look at them. They're just taking photos in the background. <laughs> they reminded me of Fast and Furious of Tokyo Drift. You guys see that movie? That's what they kept reminding me of. Anyways. Back to the shredding of the gnar. This was hands down one of the coolest experiences. Like I said, very happy I achieved one of my dreams coming to Huacachino. Man, look at that. Just full sending it down there. It gets to a point where you're like, let's just go. <laughs> look at me. Let's go, baby. That's how you make a play. <laughs> so much fun. I strongly recommend it. It's difficult. Even I have like 12 years of experience from snowboarding, but it's something I totally recommend. You get the hang of it after two or three hills. And if you have a good instructor, it's pretty simple. You just put wax on your board. And then at the end of the run, you get to ski down to the bottom of the city where you can spend the night if you want to and go to a couple of disco clubs. But I ended up just going back that same night and got a couple of road beers for myself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate if you guys hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.